So you've recently joined LeaseWeb, if I'm right, as the heading up the UK operations. So I guess it'd be nice to know a little bit about where you've come from in terms of careers and stuff. And obviously what attracted you to, to the post at LeaseWeb? Yeah, yeah, I came to, um, yeah, Newbie. Um, started at LeaseWeb in August of last year. So, um, so yes, just, uh, just getting my feet under the table now. Um, and starting to wear slippers instead of Bob Mel boots. So that's, that's quite right, getting comfortable. Um, I suppose if we go, I shall make it interesting for you, for, 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 let's go right back. So if I go right back, I started in sport. So I actually started with uh, racehorses. Um, so I rode racehorses for a living um, over, uh, over the jumps, over National Hunt. I uh, realised uh, pretty quickly that it was better to eat than not. Um, so to get off that diet in treadmill. Um, so then from there, um, I did a bit of uh, I did a bit of sort of uh, blood stock and, and, and a bit of buying and selling. Um, and then the Internet happened. Uh, so when the Internet happened, I set up a, a, an online blood stock agency and we were we were well ahead of our time. Uh, we were we were offering video and uh, not realizing that, that, you know, we needed fluidity at both ends of, uh, of the uh, of the cable to make sure that you could actually watch a horse's motion. Um, so uh, uh, we started then to sort of burn that onto DVD, send that out to people. And that, that, was, that was quite good. But it was the start of the start of the sort of internet revolution, really. Um, and um, uh, went on from there, we sort of sold that concept. Uh, uh, went on from there and I, I did a uh, ran an events company um so I set up an events company and that was all around I did a deal with Hilton Hotels um and within uh, sort of horse racing again but we had a bit of an online presence and then I had the opportunity to um go into technology into IT a friend of mine had sold his uh business to a uh, to a competitor and the competitor never really had any sort of sales if you like um so um he asked me to go along and see if uh, see if i could sort of help help drum that that business along um which we did and we did quite successfully in that that was in the msp space so we did everything from um uh, desktop data center to desktop uh, and everything in between really around the sort of microsoft intel uh net app storage and a lot of the early players in the antivirus markets um, so, um, yeah, I was, uh, so Wirebird, we did a, we did an MBO with Wirebird, um, and, uh, took that to, to a nice level with a sort of sub 1 million when we, when I went in there and we took that up to 8 million in revenues. Um, uh, left Wirebird, uh, it was sold to a company called Timico, um, who, um, obviously they had the connectivity piece and, Wirebird made up the IT piece, so they put the two together. Um, and then I did a bit for a couple of um, a couple of large. Um, one was a print reseller. One was uh, uh, based in the data center, which was um, in the break fix market. Um, and um, yeah, both of those they sort of took to took to sale, and they they were they wanted to build out um, a managed service part of their business. One, as I say, one was print. They wanted to add on some IT managed services. So we did that over a, over a two year period, and then with uh, MCSA, pretty similar. They were in the break fix market in the data center, and they wanted to broaden that horizon out and offer some managed services. So I went to help those guys. Um, and then uh, the opportunity um, after after a brief spell doing some uh, doing some M and A, um, the opportunity with LeaseWeb came about, um, and. I'd been reselling, I suppose, reselling DC services since 2003, really, DC and hosted and hybrid cloud solutions and various solutions. Um, and I suppose the exciting thing for me was to um, uh, join a company that sort of had, had a focus, so I had a sole focus uh, within the data center and being that, uh, being that enabler for the MSP market. So having come from there, I suppose poacher turned gamekeeper, if you like, um, it was interesting because I knew what I wanted from a, from a DC provider and a, and a cloud provider um, to be able to sell onto my clients. Um, so uh, looking at LeaseWeb, they seem to, they seem to know what they did. Um, and the, after various conversations with uh, uh, 
Con and the rest of the team. Um, the one good thing for me and the bit that was quite attractive is they also knew what they didn't do. Um, and too many, too many companies out there, you know, they, they think they know what they do well, um, but they also think they know uh, what to do, what they don't do well. Um, and, and, and these were very straight, you know, we're, we're very straight down the line. We, we, we have a, a good sort of product set um, from the, from the uh, data center out and the, the, the cloud and the hybrid cloud and the public and private sides. Um, but we stop, you know, um, and we, as I said, we allow the customer to do what they need to do um, whilst we look after the rest. Um, so I suppose that was the um, um, the culture of Lease Web and the, um, uh, the ambition um, to grow, which has always been the, the sort of one thing that I focused on all the way through. And the excitement was always growth. And that was a bit that enticed me to come and join them. Okay, and you you mentioned obviously the, the one of the attractions, Lisa Web know what they do well and and Lisa Web. I mean, it'd be great to have that sort of knowledge of the portfolio. You know, what 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 are the uh, services, products, etc. That, that the company offers at the moment? Yeah, so we got we hybrid cloud is probably the, the sort of headline, if you like, um, and we have a very strong sort of security and network. Uh, focus around providing that to our customers. So, I mean, I think we, uh, the, the bare metal and dedicated server is, it, it is where we, where our sort of history was. That was the sort of bread and butter and that's evolved then into um, the latest technologies and, and sort of the best of breed around um, our private cloud offering, which is all, all VMware based, um, our public cloud uh, offering uh, that we, is, is based on CloudStack. Um, we have disaster recovery, um, backup services. And again, from our, from our hardware to our software, it, it's all sort of top, top quadrant um, vendors um, that we're providing that for. So I think um, if, you, if you sum up our, our services, we're providing uh, sort of hybrid cloud services from the data center, um, whether that be uh, physical or virtual. Okay, and just drilling down a little bit, you mentioned that security is one of the sort of key focuses. What, uh, clearly the pandemic has thrown up some interesting challenges on its own, but even despite that, you know, there must have been other trends. So what are end users, what are you seeing, I guess, in terms of end user demand around security? Uh, and what is it that you guys obviously are there, then able to engage and, and help people address? One thing for certain is, um, um, Security and certainly cyber security uh, isn't going anywhere. It isn't going away. Um, it just keeps evolving. Uh, a bit like anything, you know, people get uh, people just get cleverer and cleverer. Uh, so, you know, um, the, the philosophy a philosophy I've always had around sort of um, uh, security, uh, no matter what it is, as far as um, uh, as far as technology is concerned, you can't stop people trying. You're never going to be able to stop people trying. Um, but you can stop them being successful. So that's the focus around lease web is we know we're going to have attacks. We know we're going to, you know, um, and, and customers know the same thing. It's how you mitigate. It's how you mitigate success of that. So damage can only be done if you're, if you're left yourself vulnerable. Um, so we put a serious amount of um, uh, time uh, and money uh, into making sure we, we we sort of stay ahead of the of the challenges as as far ahead as is physically possible. Um, thing is, with us and uh, and and other sort of uh, uh, competitors like us, I, I imagine, um, is we've got thousands of clients, thousands of clients that have different needs. Thousands of clients have different levels, and we, you know, we sell sort of our virtual private servers down at the sub four pound mark um, per month, up, up to people that are spending hundreds of thousands with us. So we get we get a broad range of needs, um, and at the end of the day, you know, we we try and make sure that we're always staying ahead of the game with our with our monitoring systems, with our security. We have a, a dedicated SOC um that is sort of as i say constantly looking at threats and just how we can stay ahead of them we have and, and i suppose this is where it comes from with myself coming from the sort of user side of it the msp side of it um you know how much damage this can do to uh to providers 
as far as downtime, because invariably we're not providing services to the end end client. We, we tend to be, you know, whether we're providing it to, you know, our customers are uh, SaaS providers, the tech market, the fintech, ad tech, martech, the managed service providers. It, we're providing our service, our end user is usually the middleman. So software providers who are providing theirs on. Um, so there's this, there's this constant sort of uh, train and intensity from those because, you know, there's a, there's a sort of, if you like, a, a kicking happening all the way up. Um, so sometimes if you're just one on one with a with direct with an end user, um, you can you can talk that out. You can you can work out the, the process. But, you know, you've got you've got a, uh, you've got more people in that in, in more steps in that process, if you like. Um, so we have to be we're, and we're at the end of that. So we have to be really cautious all the time and we can only do it by keeping constant keeping looking at threats, monitoring as we go uh, and keep developing as much as is physically possible to prevent uh, attacks happening. But as I say, no one can sit here and tell you that they can stop them happening. But we can sit here and say that we put a lot of investment into making sure that they're not successful. And and I mean, there, there are two philosophies, I suppose, about security. Some people think it is possible to prevent all breaches and other people are maybe more pragmatic and say it's going to happen. If we take that second approach, then I'm guessing that backup and you mentioned, I think, your disaster recovery as a service, those are key parts maybe of, an, of a large security. So what is it that you guys do around that to help people, you know, if they do have issues around data getting lost or whatever, or just obviously keeping that data as secure as they can? with backup and and then the ability to recover yeah well again you know from a from a client perspective it depends on their level of risk so we 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 can offer everything from uh, from from gold star down to absolute you know if, if a customer wants to uh, depends how important they uh, perceive their uh, data to be so it is down to the customer as far as how much belts and braces they they want uh, around that um, and, and we offer again, we offer best of best of breed as far as um, technologies are concerned. So we make sure again, top quadrant with um, uh, our uh, Veeam, Acronis um, uh, backups and, and DR. From our side, with our physical hardware, if we look at hybrid cloud, and you know, you know this as well as I do. You know, everyone talks about cloud and. Some people just think it just sits in the air. Everything works on hardware. You know, it all sits on hardware somewhere. Um, and so from our point of view, being, uh, being the sort of uh, uh, DC um, uh, maintainer and provider, every single piece of our equipment is redundant. So no matter what it is, whether it's power, whether it's from the, from, if we start from the DC, it's the power cooling and all that nice stuff around the actual building and the physical side of it. We come into the come into the racks, come into the hardware, the, the power supplies, you know, everything we have is is redundant. So there's never one single point of failure. Um, and then, as I say, from there, customers can decide their own um, uh, level of risk, if you like, um, and we can cater for that. But we can't we can't force it down someone's throat um, because we all we all take risk in uh, in various <laughs> in different ways. <laughs> like we've seen with this current sort of pandemic, and you know, never has it been more prevalent of people's um, uh, views on on risks and uh, their views on how things should be done correctly or incorrectly. You've re I'm referenced the hybrid cloud a few times while we chatted. Is that uh, do you think everyone's worked out that you know rather than private or just public um that the hybrid model and even not just cloud but obviously a bit of on-premise it maybe themselves do you think that is the the obvious logical way forward or do you think there are cases where people can still justify keeping all their it in-house or just using a you know, a public cloud and nothing else what, what are your thoughts on on the cloud i guess i think what are your thoughts on cloud well um <laughs> I don't think anyone can ever say um, that there, there's the one approach is hybrid and, and that's the way you go. You know, it has to be done. I think there are many customers out there that could still run their business at the levels that they need to run it at with a physical server sat in the corner. 
if I go back in my day, we had um, we we looked after the old printers. You know, I mean, they're a dying sort of trade now, but the old printers that used to do everything. And my, you'd go in there, and of course, the nature of the business, there'd be these old white compacts sat in the corner that were running everything with with four inches of dust all over them. And the one thing you never did was turn them off. You know, because that's but. Yeah, you could have said to them all day long about taking that to the cloud. There was no benefit to them taking it to the cloud because at that time, again, perceived risks, so it was working and it worked for them. So I think logically hybrid cloud works in most situations because there are certain applications. I mean, if we, if we look at cloud, I mean, the first thing to ever go and, and no one thinks anything of it now, but, but you look at uh, email, you know, it's, it's logical for it to be somewhere else because it has to go somewhere else for you to use it. You can't emailing yourself is no use whatsoever. And usually around an office, you can shout at someone. So you don't need within that proximity to email. So it's, it's logical to put that away. When you've got certain applications that, you know, for, for whatever reason, speed, size, and it can be better for them to sit in your office space. You know, and startups now, everyone sort of says about startups now, and that's natural. Boom, they throw everything in the cloud. It's a bit of a generalisation. They, they don't tend to. I mean, it tends to me to, you know, depend on the level of skill you've got within your organisation, even a startup. You know, startups doesn't necessarily mean one person. You know, you can, have, you can have multiple people in a startup and you can have multiple skill levels and you can have multiple historic um, skill levels and, 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 you know, where people have uh, happily run uh, businesses on, on physical approach. But yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't think the answer is ever one or the other from the start. I think once you get under the skin of a, a client or a customer, I think, you know, the reason we, I talk about hybrid cloud and we offer hybrid cloud is it, it's so that it fits uh, certain people at, at certain levels. I think most a uh, bit of a generalization, but I think if you went out there and if I look at the data, most companies now are running with some form of hybrid cloud, whether they know it or not, because even if they're an 0365 user, you know, they're running cloud. So whether they, whether they perceive them to be uh, running a hybrid environment or not, most people pretty much are. Okay, and in terms of um, maybe looking a bit further ahead, although they're, they're already out there, we got things like sort of 5G, uh, and the edge, everyone's talking about that, like it's you know the, the best things in sliced bread, uh, and obviously AI, uh, I, uh, IoT, which is, I guess is related to edge and so on. So that sort of landscape, what are you, if anything, are you seeing at the moment? And do you have any thoughts as to, I say, you know, if we cut through some of the hype as to what might actually play out? Say, you know, if we maybe say five G edge is one, and then sort of AI um, as another sort of trend. Yeah, I, I, um, a lot of it, as you say, with the words with, with, with the edge and things like this, is the um, it's a, it's uh, it's like an investment, isn't it? Don't you you buy on hype and sell on reality, you know? So uh, yeah. and, and before it ever happens, they're always the best things in slot spread. Um, I think five G uh, is if five G pans out as it as it as it should do, and as it uh, I'm sure it will do, it's going to make life easier it's going to make life more connected um, and as we um, try and use and, and again we've split them out but you, you know when you're looking at IOT when you're looking at you know being able to get sort of data and uh, sensors used in the way that can actually provide real results and real time results to where it's I suppose where it's really needed I had a um, with the whole 5G and the Internet of Things, I had a call, conversation, oh, this would have been sort of four or five years ago around, um, and it was with some guys from Vodafone. And it was, you know, when you saw it, that when you saw the practical benefits, and this was around putting sensors into crops in third world so that you could, you could monitor rainfall, because obviously water's, you know, uh water is that 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 gold commodity uh in the, and it was making sure there was no waste and when you saw that as a potential you just saw the art you know the art of the possible there was was phenomenal and that's really you know some great things that can be done when you mesh a few of these technologies together 
Um, I'm sure they're going to have benefits. Um, the edge, the edge. So the edge brings, um, and again, I'm not, um, uh, I'm not, I don't come from a technical background. I'll come more from the sort of the over the top um, kind of uh, viewpoints on technology. Uh, the edge uh, brings sort of security closer to the person. It brings, it brings uh, uh, speed of uh, speed of transaction, speed of data. It brings that closer to closer to the uh, to the user, if you like. Um, things like, I suppose, what's the, the one of the? I suppose if you look at an iPhone, if you look at facial recognition, you know, bringing that security to the to the device rather than taking that security back speeds things up, makes it more secure, speeds things up. So, yeah, I mean, um, it, 5G and the edge are going to have benefits. There's probably a lot more um, skillful people and a lot more uh, intelligent people around that will give you better answers around those kind of things. Um, I can certainly see, I can certainly see the benefits. I can see how our edge technology will reduce the footprints in things like um, in things like data centers and cloud, um, because it sort of does bring that bring that layer down to the user more. Um, and certainly, if you can if you can uh, reduce latency, um, if you can increase speed, um, if you can uh, reduce the reliance on uh, external bandwidth. These have all got to be good things in our in our new world. Um, and our new world, you know, for me, you, I've got two daughters, 14 and 11, and um, they don't watch anything live on telly anymore, you know, because they seem to they seem to use TV as um, uh, they want to gain something from it. So it's all about sort of uh, what's the trend, what's happening, what's how can I improve and. It, all of that world is at your fingertips, but we put up with a bit of latency. We put up with our phones when we're driving along a motorway, cutting out four times in a in a in a call. Um, they don't, as such, and you know they 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 want to see these things. They want to do it um, when they when they want to, how they want to, and where they want to. So um, so you'll see some improvements there, I'm sure, with um, with with the take up of five G. Uh, and the edge. Um, AI and internet of things, uh, again, definitely going to be more intelligent people that give you better answers. But uh, when we look at AI, when we look at the, um, uh, and connecting that with the edge, I suppose, when you look at the uh, driverless cars and, uh, and this type of uh, uh, world that we're going into, one thing that makes all of these technologies relevant to us is it all produces data um, and data has to be stored somewhere. And, and thankfully, we're in the, the DC market that um, uh, hosts uh, thousands and thousands of terabytes of, of, of data. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, you know, uh, the um, uh, AI is not something I don't think we should be scared about. I think AI will push push roles further up. Um, and I know there's, a, a, you know, there's scepticism about it taking away jobs and taking away human jobs. Um, I, I don't think we should be scared of it. I think it pushes the, you know, it, it, it will enable us to use artificial intelligence to um, perhaps do more mundane tasks and more repetitive tasks that we now have to use human uh, humans for. And I think the human skill levels can be pushed pushed up the line a bit more. So I think it, you know, for me, it's not something to be fearful of. I think it should be something that should be embraced. Okay. Um, and just as we sort of finish up, uh, sort of two things, I guess. One, are there any other trends, sort of, whether it's technology or issues, and maybe I'm thinking something like sustainability, whether that's something you're, you're seeing increase importance. Uh, and secondly, I guess, any plans you can share with us as to what Leafs Web is going to be up to, you know, rest of this year and, and you know, a bit further into the future. Yeah, uh, technologies and trends. Well, we've just had a pandemic. So the technologies and trends that we've seen, it'll be interesting to see how they pan out. Um, so 
what we're doing now, um, remote working, I'm sure we would have, uh, you know, we would have been able to sit in a sit in an office and uh, and film this uh, side by side and uh, had a coffee while we were doing it. But um, all of this, all of these technologies, all of this ability to be able to still uh, meet and, and, and carry out your business uh, remotely. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that pans out post COVID uh, and the office spaces and, and how we do things. I think, I think technology will have helped us going forward to maybe split our days and split our working life to sort of transactional and, re and, and more relationship, you know, so where you do need to see people, where you do need to engage, where you do need to get out, you can do that knowing that technology has allowed you to do the transactional stuff from wherever. Um, so I think that all technology will help with a work life balance, um, as far as um, uh, being able to split weeks and sort of temporary workspaces, and it will bring that, um, bring that to, uh, to, a, to a natural um, uh, sort of leaning rather than before when it was, you know, sort of, vast majority of the country that we're all office based so so i think that'll that'll help it'll be interesting to see how that that, that pans out lease web um what can we expect from lease web um uh, we're continuing to grow our footprint um so we are just taking i'm just growing by another another third in the uh, in the uk um so space wise and technology wise and we're expanding globally. We've opened up, um, we're just uh, opening up, just completed in Japan. So we tend to, we tend to open up globally where the need takes us. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's part of our, part of our roadmap. Um, we are expanding our team uh, to, to cater for the expansion in, in the business. Business is seeing some real, um, um, some real growth around uh, multiple areas and um, certainly I'll, I'll speak for the UK so um, yeah certainly in our uh, in our SAS markets in our MSP markets um, we're seeing some good growth there and I think um, all of these sort of good news um, uh, pieces that we hear from the government on on sort of lockdown and release from lockdown um, it, it does seem to be I'm seeing a sort of correlation between those and uh, and, and where people's appetite for for business and growth uh, is going so all all positive um uh it'll be great to um uh great to go out and meet some people um so i've been with uh been with lease web since uh, since august and i'm i'm very much into uh, uh building relationships and finding out face to face what people want what people need and uh yeah since august not really been able to do that too much so I'm looking forward to going and seeing some clients. Uh, looking forward to uh, getting some uh, getting some in-depth uh, knowledge from those guys of what we should be doing because at the end of the day, the um, uh, the, the, the clients dictate uh, our direction, um, and uh, and without uh, without seeing those, it feels part of the uh, part of the role is missing. Um, personally, um, personally, I'd like to see. Uh, uh, West Ham be top club in London. Um, we get back to being a single figure handicapper, and, and my daughter's getting back to playing cricket. So, I suppose if if twenty one holds all of those things, um, I'll be a happy man. Well, that's great. Um, I really enjoyed chatting to you, Terry. So, uh, th thanks very much indeed for your time. Thanks. No, thank you. It's been a pleasure.